Hello, welcome to lesson one for Microsoft Excel. In this les lesson, we're going to go over some basic tools of Microsoft Excel. And then we're going to create our first table. So simply watch the video and follow the steps as you go through it. And this will help you learn it. So first, we'll want to open Microsoft Excel. The way to do that is you go to the Start button. Then you go to Programs. Then you go to Microsoft Office, and then you choose Microsoft Excel. It is indicated by the icon with the green X in it. Once you open Microsoft Excel, the first thing you'll notice is a grid. Inside this grid, you'll have blocks. These blocks are called cells. You'll also notice that Microsoft Excel has a ribbon just like Microsoft Word had. It also has different tabs. You'll also notice in the grid that the top of the grid has letters. These letters indicate each column. You can select any column by moving your cursor over the letter. So in this instance, I'll select E by clicking on E. You'll notice that the cursor is generally a white plus but if you move it over the column head it turns into a black down arrow. If you move it over to the row which is indicated by these numbers on the left you can select a row. You'll notice the column changes to a right pointing arrow. Now for our exercise today we'll create our first table. To do that we'll click on the C2 cell. You'll notice that when I click on that cell with my white plus that I get this black border that shows up around it. You also notice that the letter C in the column head is highlighted and the number 2 on the row is highlighted as well. You'll notice in this black border there's a small black box on the bottom right. That is called the handle. The handle can be used to manipulate information or make changes. It can also be used to copy and to autofill information as well. We'll get to that further down this lesson. For the C2 cell, we're going to put in information. What we're going to do on this one is we are going to make a table of points scored in a basketball game. So the way we enter the information in to C2 is we go to the formula bar, which is right here. So I'll put my cursor inside that, and then I'll type in the text. So let's use a mythical character. Um, in this example, we'll use Zavis. Zavis is a basketball player, so we'll do Zavis basket ball points. And I'll click on a different cell. And you'll notice that Zavis basketball points is bled over into D. If we want to resize that column and make it wider, we simply go to the column head. You'll notice the line in between C and D right here. When I move my cursor on it, I get a plus with two arrows on the sides. I can then left click and I can drag it to make it wider. You notice that the pixels and the width changes there in that box. Or I can simply double click on the line and it'll make it wide enough for the text to fit in it. Now I have my cell highlighted here. I can change the font. Instead of using Calibri, maybe I want to use a different font. Let's use Arial Black so we make it nice and bold. And then let's change the font size to 18 point. That'll be a good font size for our table. Remember, this is the title of the table, so we want it to be nice and bold and to stand out. I want to make my C column a little bit wider so that the whole text fits inside of it. So I'll double click again on that edge and it makes it wider. Now let's add a border to the bottom of our cell. The way we do that is under the home tab in the font box you'll see a border button here. If I click that down arrow I can choose from different borders. For this example I'm just going to put a bottom border in place. Now I'm going to choose B3. You can see the border there on C2, that line. In B3, we're going to t 
title our columns for our table. So in B3, we're going to say game number. And then I can use tab or I can just click on C3. Then we'll play team played. And then I can either hit tab or I can move the arrow or click D3. And then I'll say points scored. And then I want to make that column a little bit wider for points scored. And with the game number and team played, I want to make that font a little bit bigger because those are titles, so I'll use 14 point font. And then I want to match the font that I used before, so I'll choose Arial Black. Again, I might need to adjust the width of each of these columns so that everything fits. And I want to go ahead and add a bottom border to this as well. Then I'll go to B4, and I'll type in the game number. One for the first game. I'll down arrow, do two. Now that I've got two numbers entered in here, I can actually use the handle to autofill till we get to game number eight. The way we do that is we'll click on with our white plus in the middle of the B4 box. And I'll hold down the left click button and then I'll drag so that I'm selecting four and five. So I've got both of those numbers selected then I can go to my handle, I can click and hold and drag down until I get all the way to 8 and then when I let go those numbers have auto filled in for us. Now I can type in the teams that we play. So let's say for the first week we play an exhibition game against Stony Point. Then week 2 we play another non-district game. Let's choose Anderson. And then week three, we get into district play. So we might play Bastrop. Then we play Cedar Creek. Then we maybe we play Elgin. Then Georgetown. Maybe some Eastview there. And then we finish the season with Hutto. Those hippos can be fierce, so watch out. They can also be very hungry as well. We call those hungry, hungry hippos. Next, we want to put in the points that Zavis scored in each of his games. So with Stony Point, let's say that he opened the season with an eight-point game. Then Anderson, perhaps he scored 20. Then Bastrop, he maybe scored 14. Cedar Creek, he had a big game and scored 34. Elgin. He did okay and got 22 points. Georgetown, he was held to 16. Eastview, he did well again and scored 36. And then Hutto, he finished with a season high 40 points. So there we have all of our points scored entered into our table. Now the next thing we want to do is create a total area. So here underneath Hutto, we can go ahead and type in total points scored. And then we can go to cell D12. When I click cell D12, I'm going to add a formula. Anytime you add a formula, you want to go to the formula bar and you want to put in the equal sign. The equal sign is next to the backspace button on your keyboard. After you put in the equal sign, you can then put in your formula. Now, something that's unique about adding numbers together in a column, you can use what's called auto sum. And to do that, you go to the home tab and then on the far right, you will see an editing box. Under editing, you'll see auto sum. If you just click that button there, it's going to automatically add up all the numbers that are above it in the column. So I click on auto sum and it automatically adds in that formula for me. So you'll see equals sum open parenthesis D4 to D11. See it right here and then they close the parenthesis. If you typed it in manually you literally would type in sum and then these symbols here. 
Once you've typed it in, you can hit the check mark here or enter on your keyboard. And you'll see that it gives us a total of 190 points for the season. Now, let's make some changes to this and make it look a little better. So let's go ahead and click on uh, B11 here, and then I'll hold the mouse button down until I get to D11. And I'll go ahead and add a bottom border to that. And then I'll go ahead and go up to B2, and I'll drag down all the way to D12. And I'm going to do to my go to my borders, and I'm going to add a thick box border. That'll give me a nice border around the outside of everything. Now on my games here, I want to actually make that column align up to the left instead of being to the right. So I can do that in a couple ways. I can click and and just highlight these cells, or I can do the whole column, and then I'll go to my home tab under alignment, and I'll do align left. Then I want to go to my teams played and see here, and let me go ahead and align that to the center. And then points scored, I want that to be aligned right. Okay, now I've got all my alignment set up, so I'll click off that so you can see. And then I've got this nice box set up as well. Let's go ahead and save the file. So I'll click on my office button, and I'll go to save as. And I'll change my directory to the U drive. And then, if you don't already have it, you want to create an Excel folder. I've already got it, so I can go into that. But if, if I need to create it, then I can just right click in this area here, and then choose New Folder. And when I get a new folder, I can name it Excel. Now, I already have one, so I don't want to do that. So I'll simply click off of it. Now, I'll go into my Excel folder. And I want to name this Intro Demo. And I'll save it. I'll hit OK, because I already did it one time. But I want to save over it. So now I have this created. If you want to see what it looked like if I printed it out, you just go to the Office button here. You go to Print, and then choose Print Preview. And this will show you what it will look like if you printed it out on the printer. Now you'll notice something's wrong. Part of our table is cut off. If I want to change that, I've got to go to Page Setup, this Page Setup button, and then I can fit it to one page by one page. Or I can make it landscape so it prints out on the paper sideways instead of up and down. If I hit landscape and hit OK, you'll notice that the paper is wider now and this prints out here. If I want to center it, I got to go back to page setup. Then I can go to margins and I can choose center horizontally on page and center vertically. And then when I do that, I hit OK. It'll actually put it dead in the middle of the sheet for me. Maybe I just want it centered on the top. Well, if I just want it centered horizontally, then I can uncheck vertically and hit OK. And then it would be centered right here. Now, this is what it would look like if I chose to print it out. I'm not going to print it right now, so I'll just hit Close Print Preview. And um, I'll save it again, make sure it's saved. And then this concludes our lesson on Lesson 1. Thank you so much for watching. You have a good rest of your day.